Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone tuning in wherever you are or for anyone watching a recording of this. Thank you for joining us for today's live online webinar, The Photographer's Guide to Luminar AI, Getting More Out of Luminar AI with author and photographer Jeff Carlson. We're going to be getting started in just a few minutes. We have quite a few people who've registered, so we're going to give them some time to join and get settled. In the meantime, feel free to tell us in the chat your name and where you're tuning in from. The chat is live and we will have a Q&A, so um, feel free to enter questions in the chat or in the Q&A and I'll be moderating. Welcome everyone, if you've just joined us and you're here for our live online webinar, The Photographer's Guide to Luminar AI, Getting More Out of Luminar AI, you've come to the right place. We're going to be getting started in just a minute. While we wait for folks to come in and get settled, you can tell us in the chat uh, your name and where you're tuning in from. Thanks. All right, it's been a couple of minutes and we're going to get started. Uh, we have some other participants who may be joining us while we're in progress, but don't worry. For those coming late or needing to head out early, we will be emailing all who registered the recording to this video. Also, if you have any questions during Jeff's demonstrations, please enter those into the Q&A or in the chat. Um, I'll be moderating those during the webinar as needed and also at the end with Jeff. So let's get started. My name is Katie Walker. I'm the marketing coordinator at Rocky Nook, and it is my pleasure to welcome and host you for the webinar today. Today, we have more than 300 people registered. So for those of you who are new to Rocky Nook, we are a small independent publishing company founded in 2006 in Santa Barbara with the goal of helping photographers of all levels improve their skills to capture those moments that matter. Recently, we have taken our passion for creativity and of making finely crafted books and started applying it to other artistic endeavors, namely publishing books on drawing, painting, graphic design, crafts, and much more. We are delighted to welcome Jeff as we promote his newly published book, The Photographer's Guide to Luminar AI, which is available now and which I will share a link to in the chat with a coupon. 40% uh, off to apply at checkout. We ask that if you buy Jeff's book, that you leave him a review through whichever avenue you purchase from, as this helps both us as the publisher and Jeff as the author. And now to welcome Jeff. Author and photographer Jeff Carlson writes for outlets such as DP Review, Creative Pro, and Macworld. He is a contributing editor at Tidbits, he is the author of numerous books, including The Photographer's Guide to Luminar AI, Take Control of Your Digital Photos, Take Control of Your Digital Storage, and Take Control of Apple Watch, among many other titles. He also co-hosts the podcasts Photo Active and Photo Combobulate, and leads photography workshops in the Pacific Northwest. He believes there's never enough coffee and does his best to test that theory. So please join me in welcoming Jeff. Hello. I didn't know like what the appropriate hello would be for that. So that was probably a little bit too goofy. Um, okay, hello, I'm signing off and I'll be okay. uh, here to moderate the chat. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you so much. So glad to be here. So we're gonna talk, talk about Luminar AI 
and I'm going to show a few different things today. Um, I, I'm going to really focus on the AI-ness of Luminar AI, and I know, well, we'll, we'll get into that in just a minute, but uh, there's a lot of things that software like this can do for you. And in some cases, you're probably gonna look at what I do and say, that's crazy, I would never ever do that. Uh, but hopefully I can make a, a, a good case for thinking about it or, or you know, trying something new. So what I'm gonna talk about today, I'm gonna cover three general areas and we'll have some questions at the end, uh, which is sometimes the really fun part of doing this. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about editing portraits. And even if you're not a portrait photographer, there are tools here that make portraits better because you're going to invariably be shooting pictures of people. And then I'm also going to talk about replacing skies. This is kind of a controversial thing because I'm a photographer. I'm going to go out, I'm going to shoot the sky where it is. Well, there are some reasons why you might want to replace the sky. And also this kind of shows what the software is capable of. So that's, that's kind of cool. And then I'm also going to talk about using uh, masks. So one of the features of AI is being able to mask, uh, sorry, one of the features of Luminar AI is being able to mask specific areas. And I'll talk about how to do that and why you'd want to do that. So that's, that's a general overview. But before I get into that, there's kind of a big matrix themed elephant in the room, which is Luminar Neo. So Skylum, the company who makes Luminar AI, they recently, I want to say in September, maybe, um, you know, time has no meaning these days, uh, September or October, they announced Luminar Neo, which is like their, their latest, greatest, newest photo editor. And um, I think I am perfectly justified to say that their messaging is a little bit confusing because here's Luminar AI and it does all these things. And so now there's going to be Luminar Neo. And is it is it a new version of Luminar AI? Well, it's, it's not, but kind of. So here's a very quick breakdown of, of, of where things are. So Skylum sees this as a, a family of products now. So if you use Luminar 4, Luminar Neo is sort of like Luminar 5. And I think what's happened is they needed to, to, to do a lot of re-architecting. Uh, Luminar 4 uh, is a good app, uh, but you know it had some, some short cam shortcomings, some performance issues. Uh, and I think, and I'm gonna say this as I'm not a developer or a programmer, but I think they wanted to, to sort of tear out the guts and make something a little bit better. And so for the first thing they did was they made Luminar AI and they, they rebuilt the engine and it's really focused on this artificial intelligence, machine learning type of uh, computations in order to edit photos. And that's, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. And then Luminar Neo builds on that and adds sort of more quote unquote pro features. So going forward, their plan is to have Luminar Neo, and that's you know the big flagship. I mean, every software company, the latest version is like the big cool thing. Uh, but Luminar AI is still gonna be available. And so all the things that I'm showing you today are going to apply uh, in Luminar AI, uh, you know, at least for the next year. And uh, you know, who knows what their, what their plan is for the, uh, outside of that. But their idea is Luminar AI is going to be the, the sort of easy choice because it has templates and it has things where you just want to make some quick edits and take care of, um, you know, minimize your time and just, just get things done easily. Hey, Jeff. Hi there. Um, yes. Some audience are having some difficulty with your audio. Oh, great. That's fun before we before we keep going any longer yeah 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 definitely all right so we're gonna make sure uh my microphone is here that is connected i believe uh he's barely audible well i could hear katie easily fascinating okay it's um maybe quiet the output that you have yeah 
It okay. shouldn't be. I have literally not touched anything since yesterday. All right. We're getting some better reports. Audio is fine. That sounds Problem. good. Just okay. And I was cutting in and out. Well, see, you know, that's that's just perfect. Okay. Let's. Um, okay. Sounds great here. Hopefully. So uh, it, I know th this is all like crazy voodoo. I swear I have an audio set up here and I record podcasts and I can I can do nothing. And then who knows? Um, you might just so. be lower than my audio and I just tend to be a loudspeaker. So it's <laughs> the contrast, but let's progress. I, I think you're OK. OK. All right. Um, so th this is going to be uh, recorded. Um, I can. I'll turn my gain up just a little bit, but um, I'm not trying to be soft spoken. So my apologies. Um, I will double check the audio in the Zoom. I've got my microphone here. Uh, yeah, that is. Okay, we're going to try something. Oh. Yeah, Zoom has seen uh, low volumes here. Let's see if this makes any difference. No, it doesn't. See, every everything should be like this, right? Hmm. Okay, then a quick test. I'm going to switch to my AirPods. All right, so now I'm not using the microphone at all. Let's get some, some quick feedback on, is this sounding better? This is better, okay. And somebody says worse. <laughs> it's much better, oh, now it's too loud. Oh my gosh. All right, so. All right, I, am, I have adjusted my input fault level in Zoom. Worse clarity. All right. Well, everybody. Oh boy. Okay, I'm seeing lots of good enoughs, and uh, my apologies. And uh, here we go. All right. So, back to Luminar Neo. Um, and by the way, thank you for your for your your feedback on this. This. Uh, there's always something, right? Okay, so so Luminar AI is gonna be the quote, easy option. And their idea is you can just sort of automate some things. Um, but as you're gonna see here, and especially if you look in the book, uh, Luminar AI, they're, they're really hyping a lot of the, these easy features, the AI features, but there is also, you know, a full photo editor. There are lots and lots of manual command uh, controls and just ways to get some really impressive results. So Luminar AI is gonna sound like the little brother that doesn't really do very much, but it actually is gonna be much more capable. I think it's just in Skylump's interest to make it, uh, to, to minimize it because of course they wanna sell new copies of the new thing. So so that's that's Neo and AI. And so now we're gonna focus on AI because that's what you can actually get right now. In fact, um, I think Skylum is saying, well, they're saying the end of the year for Luminar Neo. Um, and I know last year when Luminar AI came out, it didn't arrive until maybe the first or second week of December. And even as a book author, there wasn't a beta available until really shortly before then. So I, you know, full disclosure, I've not actually used Neo. I've not seen Neo other than the things that, that Skylum has shared. If you go to skylum.com slash luminar dash Neo, you can see all the new features. It, it does have some really impressive uh, machine learning based features that uh, I'm looking forward to playing with. Uh, I've pre-ordered my copy and I think they're doing a Black Friday sale. So go go check that out. Okay, enough of me yammering about that. Let's talk about Luminar AI. And in order to do that, I'm gonna open the app. I'm gonna share the app. Okay, 
So you should be able to see my screen right now. Um, I, I, I'm just looking at the app itself, but the way the interface works, we don't really need to use the menus too much, like the, the top menus. So um, I'm just gonna stick with this. And if something else goes wrong, well, we'll roll with it. Um, let me also say that all of the editing controls are on the right side. There's a column on the right side. And so your copy of Zoom might have my picture covering that. So if it's possible, you can move uh, that little preview off to another, another section. I'm just gonna move it completely off my screen. Okay, so let's talk about uh, editing portraits. Now, the challenge with editing a portrait, the, there are all sorts of things that you can do with portraits. Um, you know, it, it's a photo, so you're, you're adjusting tone, you're adjusting, um, you know, all the regular quote unquote photographic things. But there are also times when you might wanna do some retouching. You might want to just focus on uh, part of the face. You want to j maybe just bring up the light on someone's face. Maybe their face is a little bit in shadow. And traditionally, you would have to create a mask or you'd have to make a selection, say, if you're in Photoshop. And it can be a lot of work, basically. So I'm going to take this, this image right here. Um, and, uh, you know, raise your hands if, if you can't see this. And I will also point out that because we're on a Zoom call, uh, who knows what the... the um, you know, quality is going to be. Um, and Katie, okay. Um, so you should be able to see this. If not, I believe there will, when we do the recorded version, when you can watch it on YouTube, uh, the image quality will probably be a little bit better. Anyway, okay, so here we have uh, a portrait. Now uh, we can zoom in and we have a few different things going on. Now, I am very much of the, the natural style of, of portraiture. Um, I'm not like a, you know, high-end beauty photographer, fashion photographer. Um, there are times when you wanna do like some really serious retouching, but in general, for the things that I shoot, for I think what most people shoot, you just wanna do a few things that will, you know, make somebody a little bit better without making them look like they're made of plastic. And quite honestly, you know, I mean, there's some retouching, of course, that is just terrible. And what I like about Luminar's uh, face retouching tools is they can do great things and not make the person look artificial or make it look like you've done a whole lot of different, uh, you know, cloning and airbrushing and all of that. So as we look at this, this portrait right here, um, there are a few things we can do. Now I'm gonna go into the edit panel. And of course we have tools to do general tone and color editing. And I've, I've done some of that already on this. Um, so what I wanna focus here is there's a selection of tools uh, and over here on the right hand side, uh, and they're just portrait tools. And what the portrait tools, they focus on different areas of the face and a body. And what makes this possible is that the software, when I opened this image, it looked and it said, oh, there is something here that looks like a person. And the, the, the machine learning, the, the AI algorithms, if it knows that there's a person, it can recognize parts of a person. So it sees, oh, okay, well, that must be a face. And because it has a face, there are some eyes and there's a nose and there's a mouth. And so it, it has some knowledge about what's going on. So it, it's basically already created a sort of mask for us. So I don't have to think about where I'm gonna make an adjustment. So for example, one of the things that I will do with a portrait right away is I will uh, enhance the eyes a little bit. So if I go to face AI, the face AI tools, I can expand the eyes, uh, eyes section. And there's a slider here called eye enhancer. And if I increase that, and I'm going to 
exaggerate these just a little bit just to make sure they're really clear when we're looking at the at, at the uh, the results here um, what this is doing is it, it's just adding a little bit of contrast it's adding a little brightness to the eye which makes them sparkle a little bit more because when we're shooting a portrait you know we're, we're looking at the person's eyes um, if there was more of the, the the whites of the eyes we could we could whiten those a little bit and notice what I did not do I did not go and make a selection and specify this is the left eye, this is the right eye. Now I need to increase the exposure for that eye and increase the, um, you know, the the contrast. Like like all those things I didn't have to do because the software knows this is a face and these are eyes. Another thing that I can do that uh, you know affects everybody. There's a dark circles removal, and so when I increase that. It's just adding a little more lightness just under the eyes in those areas where everybody has dark circles. Now I'm going to do a little before and after so we can hopefully see. These are subtle adjustments. And again, we'll see what the resolution is uh, on the other side of a Zoom call. But they are little things that can make a difference. Now, I mentioned uh, face light quite often you want somebody's face to to just be a little bit brighter well there's a face light uh, slider right here so i can just increase that and i'm going to overdo it here but if if somebody's face was a little bit in shadow it just knows that okay there's the face and i'm going to increase the the shadows and the exposure there i didn't have to do anything else except increase the face light slider so uh, another thing that we could do, there's a, there's a mouth section of tools. So let's say we just want her lips to be just a little bit more red, right? Um, if I wanted, I could go super red and that's just, that's just way too much. But if I bring it down, you know, say like 20 or so, it just adds like a little bit, a uh, little pop of color there. And what it's also not doing is it's not like you're you're going in and you're saying I, want, I need to increase all of the the red and pink hues. It's just focusing on the lips because it knows where the lips are, right? Now another tool is Skin AI, and this is basically going to do just some smoothing of the skin. And uh, I don't know, maybe you cringe just a little bit because you're like, no, like age lines are great and this, it adds character. And this is all true. And this is what I like about this tool. Um, we can make it a little more flattering, but also not lose any of that texture. So if I, let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit more so you can see better. Um, so I'm going to just increase the skin AI. And hopefully you can see, I'll, I'll undo this. Um, again, this is probably, this is a lot more than I would normally do, but just to show what it's doing. Um, here is the before, and here is the after. So what it's doing is it's, it's just removing, <clears throat> excuse me, removing some of those little shadows, some of those little wrinkles, and just making the skin appear a little bit smoother, a little bit more flattering. Now, what you'll notice is there's still texture there. She's not just a big blur of skin color, which you know some tools will do. Um, if you try to do this manually, uh, it can be a lot of work. And so this just this just makes a, a portrait a little bit more flattering with the skin. Um, if you have like a shine caused by lights, there's a shine removal slider, which uh, it, it, it really depends on the image. And here it's not really doing very much because there's not a real prominent shine. This is just more of a glow from the light. And then one thing that you can try is there's a, a skin defects removal AI. Um, I don't really like the, the term defects, but basically this is saying, let the AI figure out if there are any you know, blemishes, pimples, et cetera. So when I click that, it's removed some you know, moles and, and things like that. Um, for her, I think that sort of goes against uh, 
you know, her, her natural features. So I probably would not use that for this. Uh, however, let's say you have a shot of somebody and it's going to be used for stock art and, you know, where, where you have a little bit more latitude. You're not trying to make a portrait of this specific person for them. So that, that can be uh, very helpful. Um, there are some body uh, features, which, eh, whatever. Um, if, if you need to slim somebody or, you know, make them a little bit broader, oftentimes what this is good for is if you've shot somebody with a wide angle lens and you have some, some body distortion. So it's not really talking about their, uh, you know, their, their features. It's because the lens introduced that. So that can be good there. So that is a really quick look at, at some of the things you can do here. Now, again, because this is the AI doing this, the, the software just looks at this image and it knows where a face is. Now that becomes very helpful because now let's say we have a whole set of photos from the same photo shoot and we want to apply those edits. So if I go into my library here, my catalog, and I select, let's say I'm just going to select these others. I can say, uh, <laughs> here I am saying, we're not going to need any images. All right, we're going to need an image. Um, if we go to adjustments and sync adjustments, what it's going to do is it's going to apply those edits to all the selected photos. Now, if you were using some other programs that do not have this AI, you would probably see some smoothing and the, the like the eye enhancement, but they apply those as, as individual masks all over. And so in this case, because she is moved in the frame, so here she's higher in the frame, you could end up with something like, like you know, the, the accented eyes, but they would actually be on her cheeks relative to the previous image. But that's not the case because Luminar says, oh, okay, this is a face. And these are the eyes and these are the, the, the lips and the mouth. And so it can make those edits in the correct places. And that's, that's huge and a massive time saver if you have, say, a portrait session where you've done, you know, 50 or 100 different photos and you want to just apply that consistent look throughout. All right, I'm going to do one more thing. Uh, one more feature that I want to show off that doesn't really work for, for this image. Um, so I have another portrait here. Now, in, in this portrait, um, and I've, I've already done a little bit of work on it, but uh, one of the things that I don't like as much is that um, there wasn't very much space between uh, the people and the background. And I I kind of want some of that depth of field. I want some separation. So there's a portrait bokeh, 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 uh, however you want to say it. It's a, a portrait blurring uh, feature. And what that will do is, again, because the software knows that there are people in this shot, I can just turn this on, increase the mask, and it's going to think about it a little bit. And what it's doing is, now blurring the background. And I'll crank this up a little bit. Um, when I have my, my uh, mouse pointer over the uh, amount, it's showing me the mask so I can see exactly what the, the, the software, like the area that it's working on. And then if I take that off. So what we've done is we have blurred the background a bit and it looks fairly natural and doesn't have that, that um, I mean, it doesn't look like you've just made a selection and, and hit blur. You'll notice like it's a little bit more blurry at the top where the, the distance is, is farther away, less so at the bottom. And if you notice that my, my uh, mouse pointer here has basically a brush icon. And if I wanted to, I can, go and edit this. I'm not sure if it's going to do it because of the timing. Um, but you can go in and you know maybe smooth the edges around their hair so it blends a little bit better. So that's that's an example of 
getting some of that that distance, that depth of field that is really great in portraits. Um, one last thing that I'll notice about this is, um, you know, we have two people in this image. Well, the software recognizes that there are two people and therefore it's going to treat them as two different people. So if I increase my face light, it's gonna increase the face light on both people. Now it's gonna do these settings to everybody. So the same you know, skin smoothing would happen to everybody in the picture, but um, you know, you're not having to sort of work on one person and work on another if you just need to bring up everybody's, everybody's light. Okay, so that is uh, a quick look at the portrait, portrait tools. And uh, I wonder, all right, I'm just gonna uh, plow straight on the head. I cannot see the, uh, the, the chatter questions, but um, unless there's something like we really need to address right away, I'm just gonna jump right in. Katie's not jumping in, so okay, we're gonna do that. All right, the next thing is uh, replacing skies. Now, uh, we can have a fantastic conversation about whether you should replace skies if you are um, changing a sky. Is it ruining the the uh, you know the the relevance of the image because it's not exactly what you shot that day, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. My point of view is uh, yes. If you are in a location and you have a great sky, shoot the heck out of it and just be happy that it happened. Sometimes you just don't have that luxury. Sometimes you happen to be on a beach and it's in the middle of the day like this. And, uh, you know, this is a perfectly fine shot. There's nothing really fantastic about it, but this was the time that I was there. Uh, I wasn't actually there, you know, as a photo excursion. I was there with my family and I had my camera and so I took some pictures. And, you know, it's a perfectly fine photo. But what if we want to be artistic? What if we want to do something more with this? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go up to the Sky AI. Now, again, you're going to be saying to yourself, boy, he's hammering on this a lot. The AI features, be just as in the, the, the portraits, when we open the image, it took a second and Luminar determined what was in the picture. Well, it did the same thing when we did this shot too. And in this shot, there's a sky, there's an obvious sky that it can figure out. So since it knows that there's a sky, we can do something with it. So in the sky AI, excuse me, the sky AI, AI tool, um, it'll give you a couple of, of recommendations and you can also, oh, I have to turn it on. <laughs> okay. Um, it will it will basically do a whole lot of masking work that normally you'd have to do by hand. So um, I, I've already applied a sky to this and see the difference. And and with this image, the only thing that's being changed, I haven't done any other edits, I haven't changed the exposure. This is just straight image. And then when I add a sky, see what happens. Of course, with that lead up, it's gonna, oh, hey, it looks great. So now we have something that's completely different. We have a really dramatic sunset. We have uh, the, the light has changed throughout the entire image. And this looks a lot better. So let's take a little quick tour of, of what happened. All right, so I'm going to uh, just, reset that to normal. And it has a couple of suggestions if you, if you want, uh, but I'm going to go into my sky selection and I'm going to find, I believe it was this one. Well, that was a different one, but look, here's, here's this one. Um, I do wish that they had these uh, a little better name. There we go. Okay, Sunset Clouds 3. Now, what it's done is uh, it's, it's replaced the sky, but 
notice a few different things. So we have this bridge back here. Well, that, if you've ever tried to manually mask out something like this, it's a lot of work. It takes a lot of time. And it's done a fairly good job of, of letting the sky show through there. So with this applied, we can do a few things to it. So I can set the sky orientation. Um, so let's say I want to, well, not move it that high, but I want to adjust it so that there's a little bit of, um, you know, we're, we're uh, fixing the horizon as, as to where it is. Now, if you notice, as I move the vertical position down, it's not just treating that image as a flat image and just moving it up and down. It's actually scaling it a bit so that you get a little more realistic uh, example of, of, of what the sky would do if you were uh, looking at it. Um, you can also click this horizon position and, um, you know, let's say you have a shot that's not aligned or you have something that's that's very definitely on a on an angle you can then adjust that um, so that's you know we're, we're, we're going to just get a little bit of a little bit of uh, we'll change that a little there now it's not perfect there are issues we still have some spots in the bridge that that are a little bit gray there's some um, on the upper right corner you can see that the trees have not been exactly masked. And so that, for that, we're gonna go into mask refinement. And um, this is explained in more detail in the book, but we can use these mask refinement tools to get rid of some of those artifacts. So if I increase the, the global refinement, you'll see we have more of the bridge showing through, the, the trees look more natural there. Um, there's a, a closed gaps, uh, slider here and it's a tool that you really have to just sort of play with to try to to get it right but you know even just like that it looks a lot better now you notice that that the the scene looks a little bit different um, the, the exposure overall because we have a, a dark sky um, and so we can relight it so the relight strength has just been set at 20 here um, I can increase that and it's going to match the sky a little bit better. It's going to figure out, all right, if this sky was really there, what would the ground look like? Um, and then what's really great about Luminar AI, uh, so there was sky replacement in Luminar 4, but um, you couldn't deal with reflections and um, you know, re reflected light in water. And it, of course, that just ruins the whole the whole effect. So here, there's there's actual uh, a, a, an actual reflection amount of reflection tools that the AI figures out where there's water, and uh, you can adjust the strength of that. Now, in, in this shot, there's not a whole lot of of, of reflected. Uh, water just because of, of where it's located. I'll switch that to, I'll switch to another image here. So if we look at something that's a little bit more straightforward. And if I open this, and let's just say we want, um, you know, like these wispy clouds are fine, but let's say we want some more dramatic clouds. Then what this will do is, yeah, something like that. Um, I can change the reflection amount and that, so the, the, the clouds at the top have already been reflected in the bottom. Let me turn this off so you can see. So there's the before and there's the after. So you're getting a more natural look that looks like these clouds really were there. And again, you can you can jump in, you know, maybe that's a little bit too much. Maybe I want the reflection to be less pronounced. Um, and that that just just sells the idea. Now you're thinking, okay, maybe I just didn't have like a really boring sky. Maybe I, you know, I have like more practical reasons for something like this. Um, if you shoot real estate photography, you pretty much need to have really interesting skies and 
in the you know hour or two that you had to shoot a house, maybe you just didn't have interesting skies. Something like this, especially when you're looking at um, you know real estate photos, sometimes they're they're smaller, lower resolution. It just imparts you know a more favorable look to the sky, and so then you can focus on on the house or whatever. Okay. Um, somebody says, can you add your own skies? Uh, yes. Yes, you can absolutely add your own skies. Um, in fact, um, a lot of these at the bottom uh, are ones that I've added. And of course, that looks terrible because it has all of the, uh, the, the, the trees and power lines and stuff. But um, I think this is these are my skies. All right. So obviously, this completely ruins the effect. However, if I wanted to, I could drop this down and make different adjustments. Um, you know, th this is obviously not a really good selection for this particular photo, which means you do have to be judicious in, in how you do this. Um, th there was another example that I used in, in my last book where the, um, the sky looked great, but if you were there, you would know that it was actually facing uh, I think north, and of course there would be no sunset there, but you know, whatever, we're being creative, we're giving ourselves artistic license, all that kind of stuff. All right, so that's sky replacement. Now, um, I want to talk about local masking. I know we're, we're sort of like blasting through, through a lot of this, but um, the thing with AI. Now, I you know I've already talked about how the the software is figuring out where things are. It knows that there's a sky. It knows that there's uh, you know, people and and other types of objects. But sometimes you want more control. Now, the regular editing tools, and I, I should show this just as a matter of of uh, trying to be complete. We have light tools. We have you know, uh, exposure and shadows and highlights and blacks and whites and curves and uh, like all of these tools are there. But and I'm going to make a, a broad edit here that's going to look terrible. But just to show like when I increase the exposure, it increases it for the entire image. And oftentimes you, you don't want that. You just want to work on a specific part of an image. And that's where local masks come in. So just looking at this picture, we've got um, like th this is a perfectly good image, but I can see a few things that would make it better. For example, the lower section seems a little bit too bright for me. I don't really want a lot of attention paid to this this power box at the bottom. Um, the sky seems a little bit cool, and uh, I, I really want to take advantage of of the warmth of these reflections here. If I just try to do that using the, the plain edit tools, it's going to make those edits to the entire image, and I don't want that. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the local masking panel here. And I'm going to create a new basic local mask. Now, what we have here is we have a subset of controls here and the ability to target those to a specific area. So for example, let's, let's just do the bottom of the image. I'm going to choose a gradient mask, and I'm going to drag that to just cover the bottom portion of the image. And it's a gradient mask, gradient meaning that it's, it has full strength at the bottom, and where I stopped dragging, the strength is at zero, so that the adjustment that we make is going to blend into the rest of the image. So then when I make an exposure adjustment here, just to bring down the darkness of that area, it's only affecting the foreground. It's only affecting this, this gradient area. And so that's, that's really nice. And this is separate from, from all, the other, all the other tools. Now, another thing I wanna do is I want to warm up the sky. So I can do the same thing. I can create a new mask. And I'm going to create another gradient. And I'm going to drag that from the top to cover my sky. Change the, the intensity. And I'm just going to increase the warmth a bit. 
Now, it's, it's not changing the warmth anywhere else. It's just in that area. And this gives you a lot of control over targeting specific spots. So the last thing I want to do here is I want to look at this, this, there's a little bit of a reflection on the boat here over to the right. And that I think could be an interesting thing to draw the viewer's eye. So I'm gonna create another local mask. And this time I'm gonna use a paint mask, which is basically, I, I just have a brush. And I'm gonna just paint roughly on this area. And now I'm gonna bring up the warmth and bring up the saturation and bring up the exposure a little bit. Maybe shadows. And we're getting a little more, a little more color from that sunset. Now, I'm not getting a lot of color. And that's because if you notice in the local masking panel here, we have our masks and they're all stacked on top of each other. So the problem with what I just did was I was increasing the exposure over here on the boat in an area that I had already decreased the exposure, that, that whole bottom section. So I can go back to the bottom section and can, if I press the slash key, you'll see the, the, uh, the mask itself. And I, I don't really want the boat itself to be darkened by this. So what I can do is I can switch to my eraser here with a paint mask and I can just erase this part of that gradient mask so that the, the dark gradient at the bottom doesn't overpower what I want for the rest of it. And if I do that, so um, again, it, this example is in the book and the, the refinement is a little bit better in the book because I haven't done it quickly. But this gives you the opportunity to target specific areas. Now, one last thing about local masking is um, you not only have the, this local masking panel, but you also have local masking in a lot of the, the different uh, tools. So for example, let's say I increase the saturation, right? Now I'm not creating a new local mask for this, but I want the saturation to be, you know, really high because I'm crazy. And I think, eh, that's, that, that's a little bit too much. But what I like about this is it's really giving me a lot more color on that boat. So what I can do is I can create a local mask for individual tools and then uh, increase this a little bit. I'm going to show my... And then, you know, roughly, super ugly roughly. I'm going to decide where that tool, just the effects of that one tool, apply. And actually, and as a little added bonus, I've gotten some color in the in the water here. So not only do you have uh, specific local masks that, that are, are sort of like layers, they're not really layers, but they act in a way as layers, but you can also do it for individual tools. Now, the problem is, is that if I wanted to do anything else, like let's say I just want to, I wanted to you know, increase the, the, the luminance of the orange, for example. Um, I could do that, but it's only going to be affected in the areas that, that the mask applies to. Okay, so that's a really, really quick look at, at, at Luminar, um, at some of these tools. But the thing that I want you to, to take away from this is the most manual stuff that I did today was in masking and being able to to you know target those specific areas is great but there are so many different areas where because the software knows what's in your image and can can figure that out you can do edits like portrait edits like um, you know working on skies where you don't have to do a whole lot of masking you don't have to do a lot of manual work 
and the, the software figures it out for itself. So with that, what questions do we have? Uh, we have a few. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you, Jeff. That was really great. Um, we've already had a lot of good feedback in the chat. Okay. And um, I'm going to get to the questions in the order that I received them. Okay. So some of them were in chat and some of them are in the Q&A. There's more that are coming in. So the first question was from Dan Guy, and he was asking about the syncing edit features. Mm -hmm. um, does that work for sports and action images? Can you sync edits on those photos? Um, what well, you can sync edits on on anything. It just depends on on what the software sees. So um, yeah. So so um, you know my my when you say sports and action photos, I'm thinking of like let's say um, like a uh, basketball, basketball game, basketball player. Um, and you know, he's, you have five or six shots of him making a jump shot and you want to lighten his face. Um, yes, that would lighten his face in the correct spot in each, in each image. And also I should point out that when I'm syncing those adjustments, it's syncing all the adjustments. So, you know, if, if one was darker and one was lighter, you'd probably have to go back and, and manually uh, uh, touch those up. But, um, you know, in, in terms of, of being able to you know, transfer those and have, them, have, have the edits show up in the right places in each image, if it's something that the AI recognizes, then yes, you can do that. Great. Um, the next question was, for portrait editing, can you control adjustments on individual faces, like in the second portrait you showed mm -hmm. us, mm -hmm. when there are multiple people in a photo? Yes and no. Um, it, it doesn't have the controls for you to say, I just want to uh, apply this to person one or person two. So in that case, what you would do is, um, I'm trying to think if I, if I actually did this in the book. Um, you can do a bit with masking, but I think that will be a, um, a tool that, that'll be better handled in, in Luminar Neo. Uh, in, in Luminar 4, you could do that better uh, because you could create a separate layer and in layers, you would have all of the adjustments available to you. And so you could apply uh, you know, portrait edits that would apply to both people. And then you would just mask out one of the one of those people so that the, the effects are only on, say, the person on the left. And then you could create a new layer that would then let you mask the other person. And um, with Luminar AI, the the masking is not that good um, because as you saw in the, the, the layer masking panel, you, you get like a subset of like eight different tonal controls, basically tonal and color controls. So, um, I mean, you know, you could, you could do one, uh, save it as a JPEG, open it up again and work on the other side, like, like that kind of stuff. You could, um, I, I believe, I believe, I believe, um, but it's, it's not as straightforward. Let me just double check. thinking yeah well, so check. oh go ahead oh i'm sorry so so uh you know what what you could do is let's say we only wanted these uh the the skin to apply to one of the people you could create a local mask just for that tool so it's the answer is yeah you can kind of do it but not in the way that you're hoping and i think luminar neo will be able to do that much better right there was another question about masking and it mm -hmm. was with the harbor image. Could you change the order of the masks to get the same effect? Um, no, um, that is one, let me see. Um, you cannot change the order of the masks, um, which is which is lame, uh, honestly. Um, <laughs> You, you can't rename them and you can't change uh, change the order of them. So. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, let's see, there was a question on um, exporting multiple images. Mm -hmm. um, are there is there any recommendations on how to export multiple images, say up to twenty, when you're doing edits and maybe syncing them? Because some people are having difficulty with that. Yeah. Um, again, uh, Luminar Four had a batch export feature, um, and that got um, taken out of Luminar AI. I mean, Luminar AI is, is kind of uh, kind of an odd beast because they, um, yeah, I think this is just going to export the first one. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Look at me learning things. Um, if you uh, select more than one, you can export them all. You don't have the, like any robust batch processing uh, that was in earlier versions of Luminar. But um, yeah, if, if you make, let's say you sync your changes, uh, sorry, sync your adjustments and then select all the images and then export those, then that works. Okay. Um, there was another question from Gibran. Uh, Gibran was having some of the audio difficulty, so I think it got improved. He asks, um, how well would Luminar do with uh, product or food photos? Ah, um, so I would say uh, it, it it can do very well with them because you're dealing with, uh, you know, all the sort of regular tonal adjustments and you have the ability to, um, you know, create masks. So let's say you want to accentuate a highlight um, on, a piece of food or you, you know, like those kind of things. It, it, it depends on, on what level of say retouching that you're doing. Um, but, um, you know, it, it, it totally works. There's, there's a, a woman named, uh, Nicole S. Young. Um, she goes by Nicole Z and she has, um, done some videos. If you look for her on YouTube, um, she has done a lot of food photography. She's written a book on food photography um, and she's used Luminar to do that. So yes, it, it's, it's absolutely possible. Um, and one thing I should also point out is Luminar AI works as a plugin for Lightroom Classic or Apple Photos uh, and Photoshop. So let's say you're already using one of those to manage your catalog or your you're, you're doing something that you know Lightroom, I'm sorry, that you know uh, Luminar will do a little bit better. Um, one of the things that I like about Luminar, um, and it sounds almost cheesy, but there's a, there's a tool here, if I go into the edit tools. Um, this is a bad example, but um, there's, there's this group of landscape tools. And um, one of the things it'll do, it has this golden hour slider that will just sort of add a general golden tone to everything, which is sometimes nice, especially at sunsets or sunrises or, or autumn, uh, autumn shots. And you can, you can do that, you know, if you warm up the white balance, but then it, it kind of affects everything. And I love how like just this little tool gives me a, a pop of color. And so sometimes if I'm in Lightroom Classic, say I'll do some basic edits there and then um, send it to Luminar and Luminar, it, you know, makes these edits here that you want and then sends it back to Lightroom as a, as, as a TIFF and then it's there in your library. So, you know, you might get some, some benefit with your food photography by doing, you know, things that are that luminar is good at uh in in luminar and then round tripping them right um well on that note um of working between lightroom and luminar um i want to say um we're out of time on questions and I'm oh going, sorry no that's okay i'm going to save this chat and um we'll send this to jeff and i've recorded the rest of the questions that we didn't get to but I wanted to give an opportunity to, for Jeff to share if he has any projects that he's working on or any upcoming books that you want to talk about. Um, um, yeah, sure. Um, so let's see. Uh, I, I'm actually, I'm working on a, speaking of Lightroom, I'm working on a, a book for Rocky Nook about Lightroom. 
Um, and it's a uh, Lightroom course and compendium. It, it's a new addition to the course and compendium series that I'm really excited about. Um, and, you know, go, basically go to jeffcarlson.com. That's, that's the sort of hub of everything that I do. And wow, that sounds pretentious. Uh, it's, it's the hub of Jeff Carlson, but, um, uh, you'll find you know, different projects. I'm, uh, you know, writing for a bunch of different outlets. Um, again, I have a, a podcast, uh, two podcasts that I co-host that come out, um, every other week. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of like a good starting point. Great. And I just added some links to the chat, uh, for Luminar AI. Uh, we have an excerpt up on our blog for from Jeff's book. It's on templates. If you want to get more out of the book, um, I recommend looking at that. And if you want to subscribe to our newsletter and stay abreast of more webinars like Jeff's, you can do that. Um, and thank you so much, Jeff, for doing the hard part and giving us <laughs> the, the refined download. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome. And I will say, um, if you go to my site, or you can just send me an email, jeff at jeffcarlson.com, if you have any follow-up questions, and I will do my best to try to answer them. Great. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for joining us, and uh, look for a recording of this in your email. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for putting up with my audio. <laughs>